Hi, this is Sean Hafer, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over an introduction to Premiere Pro. So we'll be talking a little bit about media management. We'll talk about the interface of Premiere Pro and how to navigate it. We'll talk about importing various types of clips, such as video, music, voiceover, graphics, and how to manipulate those in your edit. We'll talk about different editing tools that we can use to create our final sequence in Premiere Pro. And we'll also talk about how to export our files for uh, use on the web or uh, to distribute to other people, whatever you need to do. Okay, so before we get into actually Premiere Pro, I wanna talk a little bit about sort of media management. And a lot of people have different ways that they organize their clips and their graphics and their audio, but I think one of the things that really matters is that you have some way. Um, what I'm going to do here is, is not in any way the best way, but it's what I usually do, and it's just one way that I can stay a little more organized. So with the zip file I have here, um, the Premiere Pro intro files, I'm going to go ahead and unzip it. So I'm on a Windows machine here. Extract all right to the desktop, and then we can see we've got our folder and inside it uh, I have some media clips, some video clips. Now these do have audio as well. Okay, so we're not going to necessarily need the audio in these, but they are there. Um, I also have a piece of uh, music from Marmoset Music that I purchased. And I've got a little bit of voiceover, um, some different phrases that we'll use in our little promotion video for treetop audio. Okay, and then we have a little um, Adobe Illustrator file of treetop tree removal service that we'll use um, in there as well. And we'll create a few other callouts with the text tools and titling tools inside of Premiere. Okay, so now one thing about Premiere is that it is, it's a nonlinear editor, so you might hear it referred to as an NLE, which stands for nonlinear editor. It is also non-destructive. So when you think about when people would have to edit film, um, you're actually cutting that film. And so you're destroying every time you would, I mean, you're, you're losing a frame a lot of times when you would make an edit. So if you had to cut that out again and move it somewhere else, you've lost a little bit of that, that um, scene, right? Or that clip. So non-destructive means that whatever we do to premieres in Premiere to any clips or audio or video or, or graphics, it's not actually changing our source footage. So everything that's on our hard drive, it's just a reference that we're using in Premiere to manipulate and create our final edit. That also means that it's, since it's referencing that, if you move those files, Premiere won't know where to find it. Now, we can reconnect those, that's not a problem, but it's just something to think about that if you're pulling a bunch of sources from different folders or different hard drives on your computer and you're importing things to the desktop and some you're saving on a USB drive and then all of a sudden you get to a point where you're later looking through something and you're like, oh, I don't need this, or you put something in a different folder, file later or something like that, you're going to break that connection with Premiere and then you're going to have to go hunting for it. So what I like to do is get all the video clips that I'm using into one folder. So that might mean I'm copying a clip um, from a, another drive over, moving a clip depending how you want to do it. So what I'm going to do is since they're already all in this folder, what we're going to use for this, I'm going to go ahead and just use this folder as my main folder. So I'm going to create a couple folders inside here to sort. So I'm just going to do a new folder and I'll call this one video or video clips, whatever you want to do. And then I'll create one for audio. And again, depending what you're doing here, um, you might have voiceover, a lot of voiceover tracks. You might have different types of music, sound effects. So you might break that down into even more folders. But for this, in this case, we'll just do this. And then I'll create another folder for our graphics and that'll be just our treetop logo or images depending because also you might have stills 
uh, photographs, all of these type of things. So then we can just drag this stuff in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my audio files into audio, grab this and drag it into graphics, and then all these video clips into video clips. So now we can see we've got our video clips in here, our graphics in here, and our audio in here. Great. So, and then the last thing I'll do is I'll just go ahead and change the name of that. We're going to just call this Treetop Promo. So, now I've got my Treetop Promo folder with my folders inside. Awesome. So we're ready to go here. So now what I'm going to do is open up Premiere Pro. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and open Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro comes with your Creative Cloud subscription. So you should have access to it. If you don't have it downloaded, just go ahead and do that. And then there also is a program called Premiere Rush, which is a very simplified version of Premiere Pro. Um, for some people, though, creating quick social media content, other things, that might be great. And that might be something that you might want to explore. But we're going to cover Premiere Pro in this tutorial. All right. So when we get into here, we've got our options of a new project, open an existing project. We've got recent projects here. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new project. And I'm going to call it um, Treetop Edit. And now we've got some options here. So location, where do you want to save it? So you can see it might be, in your case, it might be choosing somewhere inside one of the Adobe folders. Um, if you might have something set up, if you've used Premiere before, you might have a place that you like to save projects to. But in this case, we're going to save it right back into our folder that we just created. So I'm going to go and browse to my desktop. And there's my Treetop promo. Select that folder. And now we can see it's going to there. Down here, we've got options. If you have scratch disks, if you have multiple drives, you can use your scratch disks for different things. Uh, so you might have some faster drives for saving previews, etc. In this case, we're just going to leave that as is. But in our general tab here, um, if you have an NVIDIA video card, you will, might be on this Mercury Playback Engine Acceleration. This just lets your graphics card help speed up some of the uh, previews and playback on your screen. If you don't, you might be in software only, or there might be another option um, that's there. So usually whatever is the default is fine. Uh, we want our display format to be time code. That just means it will be hours, minutes, seconds, frames, right? So uh, we'll have that display. You might want to use frames for some reason. Um, and then there's feet and frames if you are capturing from actual film. Uh, so if you were editing that way, you might want to do that. Our display format, audio samples is great. Capture format, we don't have to worry about. But if you were capturing from an older DV camera, this is where that might come in handy. Um, and then our color management, again, I'm going to leave this at default here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now it will open up our Premiere Pro interface. So Premiere Pro, like a lot of Adobe, products has some different sort of layouts built in up here. So you can click through these tabs and see where we're at. Now we're going to use just editing. And so I'm going to go to editing and make sure that I'm going to click this little hamburger and say reset to saved layout. So hopefully we're all on the same page and now we can all see the same interface. So with editing chosen, we can look at the different videos here. So we have um, a source window. This is where basically we can preview any of our media that we bring in. And we can set in and out points and do some different things here. Uh, effects controls. So depending if you have different effects on here, uh, if you're moving things, your position, scale, opacity, all of that will be in here. Uh, there's an audio clip mixer. So once we get some audio in here, you'll have a mixer that you can use um, to see, have a little bit better idea of visually how your um, audio mix will work. And then metadata. So anything that you have in that source window, you can check your metadata there. If we go over to the right, we've got our program window. This is basically what our final edit is. This is our what will be output to 
our final file, as we're creating our edits and our cuts and our color corrections, our transitions, this is what will show that final edit. So that's that here. And then these will be our transport controls once we get some, something loaded. If we move down here, this is our audio levels. When you're working with digital audio, you never want to peak above zero dB. So this is measured in dB, but you want to always make sure that you're not peaking. If these go red, that means you've peaked and that will cause distortion and it'll sound awful. So always, I try and keep things around negative six. When you're setting levels, um, negative 12 to negative six is a good one. So if someone laughs or there's a, a big you know, cough or something that doesn't peak too high. So we'll talk about that as we move through. Our timeline is where we will create our edit. This is where we'll put all of our uh, sources and as we move them into the timeline and set them up. This is our tools palette. We'll be getting into all of those. This is our editing tools and selection tools, type tools, all of that. And then the last one down here, this is our project window. Project window will hold all of our media files, our sequences, all of that. We've got a media browser as well. If you want to just grab, go and get things from different drives uh, this way, libraries, your CC libraries are all there. Info effects, again, these are just the effects that are available. And then markers, history, a bunch of different options. So usually we'll stay inside of our project window here. Okay, so that's the basic interface. So let's get some stuff loaded in. So there's a few things we could do. You can go ahead, you could drag and drop files in to your media window here. I'm going to go ahead and import, since we have things in folders, let's go ahead and I'm going to double click. You could also go File Import right here, or you can hit Control or Command I, Command I on a Mac, Control I on Windows. So that's an option as well. But also you can just double click right in here. So I can go in, go to my desktop, Go to Treetop Promo, and we can see here we've got our different audio. So I could come in, if I just needed one of these, I could grab one and then hit Open. It'll import that file and it'll show up right here. Now I can also, if I come back and do that again, let's go ahead and delete that first. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Now again, when you delete something from here, it's not deleting it from your hard drive, it's just deleting its reference here in Premiere. Um, that's part of that non-destructive thing, right? So if I come in here again, double click, we'll go back up and let's grab that folder. And now I can say import folder here and do that. And that'll bring that in as a folder for us. Now inside of Premiere, you can also cr create folders and you'll see it's called a new bin. So we could do that as well. And that's a way to do it if we want. So we were on that, that folder, so it created a new bin inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and undo. We don't need that. But why it's called a bin is back in the film days, they would cut the strips of film and store them in big bins per scene or per um, act or however they were, they were breaking things down. So there were these big bins on wheels uh, that actually had all of the stock in it, all of the scenes cut that could go to the editor. So that's why you would see bins. All right, so we could do that again. Just bring in our other two folders. Uh, so I'll come in here and grab graphics and grab our video clips. And you can see here our treetop edit is saved in there. So we don't want to import that because we're already here. All right. So we've got that, got our media in here, etc. Now, there's a couple ways we can look at this stuff. So we can roll down right now. I'm in list view right here. That's this little icon. And if we roll these down, we can see everything we've got. We can see the different icons. So this little green icon with a waveform um, is just our audio. This is our graphic sort of icon. And then down here are clips. This is an icon for video clips. You can increase the scale or the size of these by this little slider here um, and bring that in. We also get our frame rate, our media start and end. So we get a lot of options here that we can roll through. And you can see if I keep going all the way down, I can get even more. Do, 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 right? So we can get in there. Okay. So we've got all those. Now we can also view this as icons, right? So if we come in here to icon view, um, we can view it this way. And 
once you are in this view, we can actually preview by scrubbing here, right? So we can scrub through. Um, if I go back up to the previous level, let's go into our graphics. We can actually see our graphic in this manner. And then if I go over to video clips, we can see all our video clips. Now, if you've got, if you just roll scrub over without clicking on it, we can scrub through and see what's happening on all these clips. You don't get an audio preview, and we're not going to be using any of the audio from these clips. We'll have music and voiceover, but you know, depending on what you're doing, you may want the audio from those clips. You may have on-camera audio or something like that. Now, if I select a clip, now if I scrub, I can't just do the floating scrub. I have to sort of drag. But now you can see, you can hear the sound. All right. So that can give you an idea of what's happening. And if you hit the space bar, it will play. And then you can also use, we'll get to these later, but you can use your J, K, and L keys. So if you hit J with it selected, it'll play backwards. And then every time you hit J, it'll sort of double the speed. If you hit K, it'll stop. And if you hit L, it'll play forwards. So if you hit it again, twice as fast, four times as fast, eight times as fast, all right? So J, K, L are keys that we'll use all the time. And it's, it's just a great way to move around in your media as we're, as we're editing clips. So remember those, and I'll talk about them again in a, in a few minutes. All right, so we've got that. We've got our options now. We could go from here and just start dragging. The simplest way you could probably start editing is you could come in, drag your clip in, and then you can see what happens. So immediately we get our timeline comes to life. We get a preview up in our program monitor. We get all of our transport controls active. We can see um, if I come over here now, what's happened is Premiere has automatically created a sequence for us. And a sequence is sort of like a composition in After Effects. It is, it could be your entire scene. It could be your entire edit, your film, but it is a series of clips and audio and video all in one little container. So you can have multiple sequences, nested sequences inside of a file, um, but in this case, we'll just be using one sequence, but we can also come back to our bin. If we go back up to our top layer and go back into video clips here, we'll see that we now have its name, the sequence based off that clip. And when you create a sequence, when nothing's in your timeline and you drag a clip over, it will create that sequence based on the attributes of the clip that you dragged in. So this is, if we look at this one again, let's go back to our list view and we go into um, one of these, these guys here. So we're at 24 frames a second, basically. We are size wise, 640 by 360. So I made these smaller so they'd be easier to, to download and stuff. So you can see now we have this sequence as well. It's a little bit different icon um, and that's our sequence and it's named after the same. But if we go to sequence settings, now we can see 640 by 360, 24 frames a second. It created all these. Now we can go ahead if we don't have a sequence, create a new sequence and start from scratch. So if you know you want a certain size, a certain frame rate, certain audio type, you can do that. And then Premiere will automatically try and adjust your media to fit that sequence. So you can have different frame rates, you can have different sizes, all these different things come in and edited, but you need to know that depending how you set it up, Premiere will always try and make it work. It's nice if they're all the same, but there, if you have some footage from someone else that shot on a different camera at a different frame rate, you can still find a way to make it work. So don't, don't worry about those kind of things. So Premiere is really great in that way that it's very flexible. All right, so once we have a clip in here, um, if we wanted to then go ahead and drag another clip in here, we could do that. And we can see right now we have this clip that plays into this clip. Okay. You could edit this way if you wanted to. So you could, once you select a clip, and so I'm on my selection tool, which is V, just like Photoshop and Illustrator. And you can see this little indicator as I'm rolling over here. This tells you what you're going to edit, like which side of that edit point. 
So I could go ahead and grab this and sort of move it in this way, right? Then I could grab this one and so look and see where that is. All right, perfect. And then maybe I want the beginning to be a little shorter, right? And so I can come in here, see that, and then drag it over here so it comes to the beginning. And then I come into this clip and I could go here and then edit this down. And you can see up here what's happening. It's showing me where when I'm doing this, you know, my out is black. There's nothing on this side. But that's kind of my, my point out there. So that's one way you could edit. Um, you can just use those tools and go that, that route. Uh, but I'm going to show you another way that's a little more effective in, in kind of keeping things going. So I'm going to delete these clips here. And another thing I like to do is color my clips um, different colors. So if you come in here, this one's fine as blue. I'm going to right click this one and go into my label and pick a different color. So let's go violet and label yellow, I'm trying to get these to be pretty contrasty, brown, mango, etc. Just grab a few colors and that way it'll just be a little easier when we're explaining some of these not only is it nice for organization but when we're explaining some of the different techniques um, it might help all right and I think that's good I'll do one more uh, tan. okay so now when I drag these over these colors will be the color of our clip now another thing you can do here is if you double click a clip it will show up in our source monitor then if we hit our space key, it'll play. If we hit our J, K, and L keys, the same thing. So L will play forward, single speed, double speed, four times speed, K stops, L plays backwards. And what's great with this is that you can start going through and figuring out what part you need. So let's say we're going to start with, um, let me go back to my icon view and we just, let's start with this truck so we're going to bring this truck and let's take a double click that and let's look at it coming in okay so we're there that's great and then what I want to do is I'm going to set an endpoint now I could click this little guy here and set an endpoint and undo that I can also just use my I and O so if your hands on your JKL you can just go right above there to your I and O on your keyboard. So if you're playing a clip, so let's say I'm J, go back to the beginning. Okay, I don't want to get this person out of the way maybe. So I'm going to start playing it, then hit I. And maybe I just need this little bit. Oh, perfect. That's all I need. Now, there's a couple ways we can bring this over to the clip. We could sit here and we could drag it over and drop it. All right, and you can see when I'm doing this, what's happening is... We have video tracks going up, one, two, three, and we have audio tracks going down, one, two, three. So you can use different layers, right? Different tracks here um, to have overlays and things like that. Uh, you can also put things together on one layer, which is a lot different than After Effects, right? You have to have a different track for each thing, different layer. So once we bring this over, all we have is our in to out point. Now, since this clip has more at its head and its tail, we could grab this and stretch it out until the whole clip is used up, right? And you can see when I stretch that all the way out, you get this little icon on the corner, this little triangle. That means that's the last frame of the clip. So I'll undo that. And let me move it forward a little bit and we can see the same thing at the beginning. So if you stretch it all the way out, you'll get that little icon of the triangle that shows you that's the beginning of the clip. So I will go ahead and let's go ahead and delete this one just by hitting delete or backspace. Now, another thing we can do, let's say we don't want this audio, which I know, which we don't want on this, in this case, I could also always just grab, if I click on this and drag down, I can get video only, right? So now we don't have audio here. It's still up here, but over in our source window, we can see 
it's not there. Um, if I wanted just the audio, I could do the same thing and grab just the audio. Okay, so there's that kind of thing. Now, when you do bring a clip with audio in it, they will be locked. So as we move these, they're automatically sort of locked together. Now, if you try to delete just the audio, it wouldn't let you. Now, if you hold down Alt, um, you can get just one or the other and then delete that part. Okay, so if we accidentally drag it in with audio, you can always just do that and that will do that as well. All right, so get rid of that. So let's say that's our beginning of our clip. We've got that happening and now we want to bring in, um, let's bring in our audio to see what's going on there. So I'm going to come up here, double click uh, my audio folder and I'm going to bring up my volume a little bit here because so that we can hear this. All right, so now here's our, our music, and let's double click that to see. Now we can see our waveform, and we can go ahead and sp hit spacebar to play or just play here. All right, so that's going to be our music we're going to use. So I, I think that's great. I can either grab it from up here, drag it down, or I can just go here and drag it over. So we're going to put this on audio three. Let's put it down here. And now we've got our clip. And the same thing applies. We could do grab the heads and tails, make it shorter, longer, whatever. But I think that's fine for a start. So one thing we can do here, we haven't in the timeline for moving around. You can scale in and out here on your timeline, right? Um, we can move that area around here. We can grab individual tracks and sort of make those larger. We can come here and do the same thing with the audio so we can see our waveform a little more. Now you can see when I made that a little larger, we've got this little white line going across. Now what this is, this is our volume level or our gain. So if we look over here, that's fine. But I'm gonna bring it down a little bit for now. So I'm just gonna roll over here with my selection tool set and just pull that down a little. All right, so that's fine for now. Now, if we want to mute this over here, we've got our mute button, our M. We've got solo, if that's the only thing you want to hear. Um, but we'll just mute this one for now. We know it's in here. We know how long it is. Uh, that works fine. All right. So if we come in and so we've got that happening, we've got this coming in, and maybe we want to cut sort of to the beat. So I'll unmute that. So let's see what we've got. Well, that kind of hit exactly where I maybe wanted to cut anyway. So that's, that's good. So right there is that cut. And we can see the waveform. It's right there. So maybe I'll go a little closer and we'll move this out. All right. So what I'm going to do now is find what our audio is that we want as sort of a voiceover. Because we might want to create that narrative first. So if we double click this, we'll see we've got our audio. All right. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand, Treetop Tree Service is there for you. Okay. Tree troubles? Call Treetop Tree Services for your trimming and removal needs. At Treetop, we are fully blocked. Okay, got some goof treetop, ups in there. We are That's fully fine. Bonded and adhere to strict safety standards. At Treetop, we are fully bonded and adhere to strict safety standards. Couple different versions. Our tree specialists are highly trained and fully bonded to help you with any tree needs. For more information, call 1 800 555 Tree. All right, and then maybe at the end, we're going to want that phone number for someone to call. So in this case, I'm going to start out with. Let's see what the first one was. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand. That sounds great. So that's, we're going to see this house with a tree in it. Um, let's go ahead and we can do the same thing here. We can go JKL so we can move forward. Hit our I for in. Play it forward. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand, Treetop Tree Service is there for you. And O for out. Great. 
So now we can see we could just have an audio option if we want to drag it down. So we can drag this down maybe right here. And maybe we want that to happen right as after that music sort of intro, right? So what do we have? We're at about three and a half seconds, a little past. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand, the Treetop Tree Service is there for you. Okay, so that's good. What's, now let's think of a clip that maybe would work with this. So we can go back to our project window here. Let's go into our video clips and let's find something that talks about Mother Nature dealing us a bad hand. So do we have any clips? This one might be kind of good. Um, let's see that. Let's double click that. All right, this shows a tree in the house. So that looks kind of good. All right, so let's grab this one. So let's see what we've got. So maybe we want that nice reveal. Oh, that is Mother Nature dealing a bad hand. Okay, great. So I'm gonna make this my out point. That's good. Um, so hit O. You don't have to do in first and out second. You can go out. And if you hit out, so if I was going backwards, right? So if I'm going back and I hit out, it will adjust, right? So that's um, an option there. I just undid that to get to that point. And then maybe we wanna bring this down to show in this so we get this nice motion reveal, right? Little vector of motion there. So and I'll do my eye there for in. Okay, I've got that. Again, I just wanna bring the video. I don't wanna mess with any of the other. So now let's see how this is looking. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand, the treetop tree service is there for you. Okay, so that looks okay. Now here, this is, with this is, we're just doing a straight cut. Now we could also do a cross dissolve or other different transitions. In this case, we're just gonna use just straight edits, um, just cuts for what we're doing. But if you wanted to do a dissolve, uh, by default, if we select in between those two, by default, um, the default transition is across dissolve. So you can see that going across. So now we'll see. When Mother Nature yields you a bad yeah, actually, that looks okay. Let's leave it in there. there for you. Okay. So we've got this, tr this uh, truck coming up. Now, one thing, it's not actually coming up. It kind of, this is when the truck was leaving. Uh, maybe everything was done or they were just getting it out of there. So it would be nice if it was coming up the driveway. So what we could do is we can come in here, right click, and if you go to speed duration, there's a, you can change your speed of the clip so we could speed it up or slow it down, but there's a little reverse speed checkbox. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, there we go. So now we've also got a continuing sort of vector motion, like it's coming at us, and then now it's coming up the shot there. So depending on what you're doing, that's all, always a, a great thing. You can reverse clips. You can sometimes flip clips if something makes more sense to be facing the other way. But when you do that, just make sure you don't have anything like, you know, for example, this person's shirt. If you reverse that clip or flip that clip horizontally, mirrored it, then we'd see those uh, words would be backwards. So that would be a giveaway. But if you don't have those kind of things, that's another thing you can use all the time. And also, I guess, the caution tape, right? Um, and up here in our program view, I can go ahead and, since this is a small clip, I can go to 100% and we can see this. Now, another thing, just sort of like After Effects, you've got, if your computer's running a little slow, you can come down and change your resolution um, to half um, versus full. We've got our zoom over here, which I just uh, affected. Here's where we can play and stop. You can go to the end or to the beginning um, from this place, uh, which is kind of nice. As we're going through here, so far we've just done our in and out points here. Again, we could adjust here. There also is a razor tool. So if we came over here and hit C or hit clicked on our razor tool, we could come in and do cuts that way too. So you can always do a cut. You could go back, hit V for your selection tool, select it, and hit delete. All right, so that's another way. I'm gonna undo that, because I like that where it was. Um, so that's another thing you can do. You could um, always, you could do a cut and move something aside and put another clip there, and that's fine. You can put clips also on top of other clips. Um, whatever's on top will take precedence, but you do have all of your blending modes and opacity, 
and everything that you can do. And so again, top, you know, it's just like layers in, you know, transparency or acetate or something like that. What's on top will be the you know, visible um, down through. So if you want to do, go use AB, uh, a lot of people like to edit that way. Um, you can do that. You can sort of go with your main track and then pop in other things like graphics, etc., on your other layers. Uh, so that's that's all up to you on how you choose to work. So we've got this happening. This is looking pretty good. Let's talk about that graphic. So let's go back to the beginning and let's see how that's working. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Now, starting off on this first frame, um, I'm going to go ahead, I want to kind of bring it up from, from black. Now, since we have nothing here, I can just use my um, cross dissolve because it's coming from nothing. I could do my apply default transition. And now you can see we get a little fade up from black. And so that's, that's good there too. Now, another thing we could do is up here, we've got the same thing. We've got that little line. And what we've got here is opacity. Okay, and we can change what this line represents. By default, it should be opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And what we could do is use keyframes, just like in After Effects, something like that. And what you want to do is hold down your Command or Control click key. It turns into a little plus symbol. And then we can go ahead and add a keyframe. Then we want to go to the very beginning, add that keyframe, and we could bring this down. Right, so that we could fade up that way as well. So a lot of times the transition is fine, but if you want to do keyframes, you can do it that way. We can do the same thing also with our audio. So if I turn, if I mute my music again, we're going to do what's called ducking. So if I, you know, we don't want that music playing that loud the whole time. So if we're in here, um, let's see where that level is. We hit play, spacebar. All right, so I want to bring this back up to where it's where we want it for the the actual piece. It's a little hot still. You can see my levels over here. Okay, that seems great. All right, so I'm gonna that'll be fine, and we'll do that now. Though we want to also get our voices up. It's recorded a little quiet, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute my music and let's look at this clip so let's give that a little height and now we've got this option as well so let's bring this gain up is there for you okay let's try that again listen to it when mother nature deals you a bad hand treetop tree service is there for you all right that seems fine so now the thing is we don't want to we want to make sure that when the music hits we don't when mother nature we don't want to not be able to hear the voices right deals you a bad hand so this is where we use ducking and ducking is just bringing down the level of the music while someone's talking and then we can bring it back up so it's the same technique as we did up here with the opacity once you pull this down so that you can see your little uh, line for gain which is basically just volume we can go ahead and hit our V for our selection tool, if you're not in it. Come up here, and we know we want it to be down at this point. So hold down Control, so it's a little plus. Boom. And I'll move out here a little. All right, that'll be there. And then I'll come to the end. Where that wraps up. And do another one. All right, and so now we can take this middle section. Now, I could grab each keyframe, but since I have two keyframes here, if I just click on the line... I can drag that line down and let's see how that sounds. When Mother Nature deals you a bad little, maybe a little higher. Bad hand, a treetop tree service is there for you. All right, so that's ducking. Premiere does have an auto duck feature they added in a couple versions ago, I think. I've not really used it, but you can look into that as well, where it'll use, I guess, AI to <laughs> analyze and automatically duck um, your sound for you. So that's what ducking is. So as anytime you want to have that voiceover come in, when Mother Nature deals you a bad just hand, bring it down. Tree top tree service is there and bring it you. right back up. All right. 
So that's getting that going. Now let's talk about bringing in a graphic. So if we bring in our graphic, um, we can say, here's our graphics, and we can look at that. All right, so this is an Illustrator file. It's got a transparent background. So if we just drag it on here, it should lay right on top. Now with this clip, it's a little hard to see, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open this, take this clip, uh, right click, click it and do edit original. Right, so Adobe Illustrator is what I want to use. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of a background on there so that um, it can stand out. I like that that gray, um, but again, against what we've got there as a shot, that's not gonna work. So Illustrator's opening up, and now I can come in here and go, all right, cool, let me just throw in, let's grab maybe a rounded rectangle and see what we can do here. So it's maybe something like this. All right, so let's, uh, I'll send it to the back here. All right, so it's back behind, and then let's pick, um, I don't know. <laughs> let's say we've got, um, maybe something like that, a little blue. Okay, we'll do that, but then what I wanna do is make sure, let's see how that looks, I think that's okay. And make sure we're kinda of centered, I think it looks uh, close, bring it up a little. And what I wanna do here though is let's bring down the opacity of that this guy here. So I'm gonna bring this maybe to, uh, let's go to maybe 50. All right, and let's do that. So we'll save this. Just did my old command or control save. That sounds fine. And then let's look and see what we've got here. Now we, this should adopt. All right, so there we go. So now we've got our treetop tree service with a little bit of background. Maybe that's not the best color choice, but you can choose a different color when you do yours. So there we go. Now we've got this happening. And that's sort of anything just like Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, any of these things, you can open up the original, change it, save it, and it'll update here, which is great. So what we're going to do is let's think about this. So, so I want to wait a second before Treetop Tree Service fades in. And maybe we'll have it fade out around here. Okay, so we're just gonna have it pop in, and I'm just gonna use the old transition. So I'm gonna right click, apply default transition. You could use your opacity on this if you want, but we're just gonna do that. So let's see how this looks. Maybe it's not enough. Drag it out a little. When my Maybe bring this one here. Yeah, that looks so doing a little. When Mother Nature deals you a bad. Not horrible. Okay. So maybe I'll bring this in. Now, the other thing we can do is we can actually change the duration of these guys. So we could double click it and change it. Or if you click on it, we can just grab the cross dissolve amount and make that a little quicker. So I'm just clicking on that cross dissolve. Bring that a little. So that'll give us a little faster fade up. When Mother Nature deals okay, you a hand, there we go. the treetop tree service is there for you. All right, and so then we can just keep going through, um, grab some different clips, and we could go back to our video clip. So after that, um, you know, maybe next up we want to find out what we want to talk about. Um, so we could come back into our audio, jump back into our treetop audio, and listen. Tree troubles? Call Treetop Tree Services for your trimming and removal needs. Yeah. 
At Treetop, we are fully bonded and adhere to strict safety standards. Okay, so what if we did that? So let's say we grab that one, do my old I. I can just move here or hit JKL, whatever you want to do. And then let's grab that one and drag that one down here. Okay, so you can see, even though we changed the gain on this clip, we didn't. it doesn't change it on the master clip. Um, you can do master clip changes, so, but with this, that's what's nice is even if you bring clips from your master clip, you can still manipulate them differently. So we can come back in here, adjust that gain to the same spot. At treetop, fully bonded. All right, so we're talking about strict safety, right? So let's see where we're at. Maybe we can go a little, even a little further. At treetop. So strict safety, maybe we'd want to go into something like, so we're moving up right into the air with that vector of that first motion. So let's look at our video clips and see what we've got. I think we've got some of this. Yeah, we got this guy repelling. That's kind of fun. So maybe double click that. See what we've got. Can you see him? Yeah. All right, so maybe it's something like that. So let's do an endpoint there. L to play forward. Maybe out there. Okay, so I'll drag that one without audio. And let's sort of put that there and see how this matches up. At treetop, we are fully bonded and adhere to strict safety standards. So maybe not there. So maybe we might want to put something else in that mix. Um, so we could come in here. Um, and see, like maybe fully bonded and adhere to strict, adhere to strict safety. All right. So say I wanted, I knew this wanted to be adhere to strict safety standards. Okay, I want that to be there, but maybe I want him to be a little further up. Now I could readjust this in here, um, get that all to, you know, change it in out, scrub it back, move it. But there's some other tools that we can use. So we can use here. Um, a slip tool. So that shortcut is V, or no, I'm sorry, Y. And if we come in here now, we've got that selected. Now you can see what we can do is in that same clip length, we can slip the clip inside it. So maybe when that starts talking about safety, I want him to be up higher. So now you can see this, when I've got this moving, the first frame is our new first frame or the first rectangle. And the second one is our new last frame. So we know that'll go to him coming from that top part to him coming down there. So let's see how that looks. Adhere to strict safety standards. And adhere to strict safety standards. Okay, so that looks kind of good. Fully bonded, maybe we want to have, let's see, I don't know what else we've got. Um, maybe something, since we're already on the roof, let's do that. And we're kind of coming around the front of the house. So maybe it's sort of then we get to this view of him coming down is from the side of the house. So this might make sense in a sort of vector way. So let's come in here and see what we've got. Um... Oh, that's kind of nice. All right, so maybe we'll start there. Do our little end point. Play it forward. All right, out point. So we can go ahead then and drag that down. Now it's a little long, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it above and let's see what we can do here. So maybe it's the same type of thing. At treetop, we are fully bonded and adhere to strict safety standards. Okay, so fully bonded. So again, maybe we want this to be here. Now we could do this a couple ways. We could go to our razor tool by hitting C and click right there and then I can drag that down right and then maybe just click this and delete at, at treetop we are fully bonded and adhere to strict safety standards okay that's kind of a weird cut um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this but we could again do our slip tool in here and say all right let's get to our slip tool which is Y and go ahead and adjust that. Now we can see all the frames. We can see the frame that's coming out of the first clip. We can see the frame 
that we're going to be against that clip, we can see the frame coming out of our clip that we're adjusting right now. We're slipping, and then above that, we can see the frame of the next clip coming in. So it's a really handy tool. So we know that they're kind of lifting. We're seeing the top of that tree. So maybe when we want it to be just right as it's taken off. All right, so that's kind of good. So now let's see how that looks. At treetop, we are fully bonded. And that might be another spot that would be a good, since that is such a move. And let's try a little default cross dissolve in that and maybe a little quicker. Let's try that out. At treetop, mm, we are fully bonded. Maybe something different. Strict safety standards. And this is how we would do an assembly edit, right? So we can move through, do all this. Again, we'd want to duck here. Um, if you wanted to add your own graphics, we can do that as well. So let's look at, um, what was that? I think the number was 1-800-555-TREE. So let's say we wanted, we needed that phone number to pop up somewhere. So we could come in and let's go and go to our text tool. So maybe up here on our edit, we wanted it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my text tool, my type tool, and type, click this here, and say, and now if I go over to here to my effects controls, we will see some more options here for text, all right? But if I'm in this mode, I could say 1, 800, 555, tree right so go back to my old v key if i select key now we can grab that move it around um, you can see i got that in there double click it backspace that all right so if we are in this here we could always just grab this and scale it okay that's an option um, you can see here we have over in our uh, effects controls, we've got our graphic, you can see we can adjust things there as well. So we can easily bring something in here. We also have position, scale, opacity, um, is in here, rotation. So if we wanted it to fade up, we could do that same thing here. And this is kind of a little version of the timeline, so sort of like After Effects. So if we came in here, this is what we wanted 1-800-555-TREE to be. We could easily just come in, set an opacity keyframe, bring it down to zero, move forward a little in time, bring it up to 100, move forward in time, do the reverse, right? So set another one by clicking this little guy here. Don't click the, the stopwatch because it'll delete all your keyframes. Click that and then move forward and then we'll go back to zero. All right, now this doesn't, so there's not top, we are fully bonded and it curves like in After Effects, things. things like that. But if you needed to, you could select these guys. If you right click, there is an ease in and ease out. So you could go through, um, there's not an easy ease, but you could grab just the ins, just the outs and do it that way as well. So you can do a little bit of easing um, in here. So you can also bring in after effects comps as uh, layer as actual clips so for more complex uh, text editing and lower thirds and stuff that's the way I always use it now there are tools in here if you're just using Premiere only you're not knowledgeable in After Effects that you might want to do that that's a way that you could go that way so uh, that's kind of where that is all right so we've got that We've got things when moving. Nature deals you a bad hand. Treetop Tree Service is there for you. Then we'd want to duck again, etc., um, and move through that. So let's just say we finished up our edit, and we then want to get this out of here. Okay, so to we just go to File, uh, Export Media. There it is, Media, and it kind of looks like Media Encoder, right? Um, so we can go down here and test it to see what we got. Cool. And I think it's exporting at this point all the way through your last clip. So um, we would have that music playing there. 
And then I would go H264, that seems great. We'll start with match source high bit rate, change it to, let's call it treetop, a one maybe. Okay, that looks good. And in that same folder, treetop promo, so everything's together, maybe do a you know, folder of renders, uh, save that. The only thing I'm gonna change here is go down to VBR2 pass. There we go. It's for a little better quality, a little smaller size. And we can either queue it or export it. So I'm just going to export. And it's exporting out. All right. So now we can go ahead and close this real quick. And let's see what we got. Treetop 01. When Mother Nature deals you a bad hand, Treetop Tree Service is there for you. At Treetop. So we would duck that, obviously, but there you go. So you can see it'll play all the way through the music. So when you export, you can set in and out points on your export, but by default, it'll go until the last clip. So if you ever are like just moving a clip way down the timeline um, so that, you know, you can just get it out of the way and then you forget about it, that's a, a time where... Um, it'll export like that all that time and then you'll be like, oh no. So just always make sure before you export, you check that you don't have any stray clips just stretching out uh, your sequence time. All right, well, I'm gonna stop here. This has been probably about an hour almost. Um, so I'm gonna stop here. I'll do another tutorial on a little more depth on some of these tools that we didn't hit on today. This was very much an intro uh, and how to get into there, but there's a lot of shortcuts we can use. Uh, there's a lot of other tools and ripple deletes and ripple edits and different things like that uh, that I, I'll, sh I'll record a separate video just kind of hitting the highlights of those. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and have a great day.